With over 35 years of ministry, Mount Zion Church is located in Clarkston, Michigan. You may have seen us while driving an I-75 just north of Great Lakes Crossing. We invite you today to join us as we go inside to hear a fresh and relevant word in this new day. Mount Zion, helping you experience the best life. I believe with all my heart, this is a time when we got to stand. It's a time when we also have to, what does it say the sentence before that? We also have to withstand. So it's time for us to stand and it's time for us to withstand the forces that are upon the earth that are coming against the church and coming against the people of God. We need to understand this is a season where we got to hear what God says, we got to respond by faith, and we have to be strong in the Lord so that we can do those exploits, those wonderful things that God is calling us to in this time. But we have to understand there is a spiritual environment that is what we have always called the darkness. I say always called because that's one of the scriptures you hear me read and talk about all the time, declaring, arise and shine for your light has come. What's going to cover the earth? Darkness will cover the earth, and what? Gross darkness, the people. And so we have to understand that in the time God is saying, stand up, it's time to arise, it's time to be bold, it's time to believe, we're going to see this darkness all around us, and I want you to understand something, there's a feeling aspect to it. We have to be mindful of the spiritual environment so that we're careful that we're flowing with God's spirit and not the other spirit that's working in the world. World. The Bible tells us the people are out of God, they're dead in their trespasses and sins, and the Bible tells us that the God of this world has blinded their eyes, and it tells us because of that, the Spirit works in the sons of disobedience, and so there's this counterforce, if you would, and so God says to the church, there is this environment that we are in that we have to loose ourselves from, there's a spirit of the age that we have to loose ourselves from so that we can stand up with confidence, withstanding the pressures of the time at the same time that we're standing up. And when we put on the whole armor of God, we're going to be able to stand. Amen? And so that's why we have to stand with that hope and with that expectation and also realizing in the time of our standing, there has to also be a withstanding against the things that are around us. Now, having said that, I want to talk about the prophecy of Daniel chapter 7. Now, this chapter tells us there was a time when the prophet Daniel was in a time where he received a vision from God. Now, I've often taught on prophecy, and I, I like to share this from time to time, that oftentimes when a prophecy of the Old Testament was given, there is a literal interpretation of it, which very well could be in these scriptures, but there's also in these a spiritual principle by which God works that we can learn from, but also God can show us these things, how that they can have more than one application as the Spirit of the Lord begins to open them up to us. And I've shared not only that we are a church that has recently heard from God, but as we've been following the voice of God, some of the things that we are moving into right now, he spoke to us almost 40 years ago. And in the early 80s, the Lord gave me a word one day when I was in prayer from Daniel chapter 7, and he began to speak to me about the beast that was different than all the other beasts. And this vision that he has, he sees these beasts, these systems, if you would, and he sees this great conflict that they represent, in one sense, four kingdoms that were part of the Middle East leading up to the fourth kingdom, the Roman Empire, that uh, was the the time when Jesus Christ was birthed and, and, and through the early ministry of the church, they really, in a sense, took over the Roman Empire, but that's a whole other story that I want to get into here tonight. But I, I just want you to understand, when the Lord was speaking to me that day, he said, now, there's coming an influence, a power, a system that's different than all the others. There's been a time when, in recent history, that the great conflicts of our earth were about political divisions, and oftentimes political divisions were based on, based on ethnic divisions and sometimes on philosophical differences like 
economics, for instance, there was the free world versus the communist world. There was socialism, communism versus capitalism. But the Lord began to speak to me. He said that now this fourth beast, which is more dreadful than all the rest, is an economic beast. And he said, if your country was being invaded by an army, or even just like we're hearing about with the terrorism that is assaulting our borders, what does it cause people to do? It causes us to rise up and say, we're going to fight about this, or, or, or we're going to stand against it. But he said, a more subtle influence will be the economic system of the world that will promise to people really prosperity and blessing. And so it will be very easy for people not to feel threatened by it, that we will see a more international system in the economies of the world, which is really what has happened in recent times. If you watch the news and at all interested in the economies of the world, there are economic forces going on. You're going to hear a lot about our central bank, which is uh, meeting quite frequently and Often people are watching to say, well, what do they have to say about what's happening in our economy? But you will also hear news about the central banks at all the different countries of the world and how they are doing things right now to manipulate the world economy. And we need to understand we're in a time when the systems of this world are going to be shaken. How many know the Bible says God will shake everything that can be shaken? Amen. And we need to know that because our confidence can't be in the system. Amen. Our, have, our confidence must be in the Lord. Now, in the book of the Revelation, it talks about the serpent, which is the devil who is in the garden. But then it also talks about the dragon, which represents the systems whom the devil works through, if you would, to have influences on the earth. And uh, I want you to understand there is a system at work in the world that has spiritual forces behind it. And a lot of times people will investigate the darkness, get all concerned about the darkness, and some people even major in the darkness. How many know we've been called to be sons of the light? Amen? So what we have to understand is it's not that kingdom that is our thread, but we have to understand its influence and how it could influence us. Because as Christians, how many know we have to understand that we're always in the hands of God? And we have to always understand that our contention or the thing that we want to withstand is the, the sense of the influence, but not from the idea that, well, the kingdom of darkness is going to overtake us or we have to be afraid of darkness because when you're a child of the light, you don't have to be afraid of the darkness. Amen. Our confidence is always in the light. Amen. But I, I want you to see we're living in this time Whereas there's this B system, if you would, overflowing in the world and, and having great influence. But its influence is having an impact, again, on Christians in the sense that the spirit of the age is speaking great words against the Most High. How I many you know we're living in a time when people are more and more speaking against not just Christianity, but God and, and, and the world's thinking the foolishness of people who are simple enough to believe in creation or the ways of God or even the Word of God? How I many you know if you're a person that says, well, I believe in the Word of God, the world's going to look at you in disgust and they're going to look down at you? Come on. How I many you know this is true? The, the world system is speaking great things against the Most High. And I'm using the King James Version because in the New King James, it says, so persecute the saints. And, and that seems uh, more open. And you can say Christians are coming under more persecution in the world today. Yes, there is a rise of martyrdom. And certainly in the United States today, there's a whole lot of uh, influence from our government, which is no longer pro-Christian, certainly sometimes anti-Christian, but we really do have so much freedom, you know, this it's really no threat to us, amen? It's sense of the persecution in our country, but one thing you have to understand is you can get worn out by the influences of the time. And so I think this is a much better uh, in translation. It is the literal one, which means when the systems of the world, when the powers of darkness are flowing, we don't have to be afraid that they will destroy us, but we have to understand the influences of these things can have a wearing out effect. 
Now, you need to know that because sometimes people will feel like this. And I, I want you to understand this is a prophetic word that you would understand that sometimes going through your situation, you just kind of feel like you're worn out. I know this by the spirit because God said there's some people who feel worn out. And tonight's night, I want to strengthen them so they can stand up, says the Lord. The system of this world can wear you out, especially if you're not aware of the influences and how it's impacting you. Again, it's not a literal persecution generally that we'll go to, but you can find that there is a wearing out process that we go through our everyday interacting with this world and understanding we must that there is a spirit that's behind the systems of the world and the ways of men. And so this is a very important thing for us to understand. Now, Daniel said, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, his wheels as a burning fire, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. How many know that's a beautiful picture there, the throne room of God? Standing with thousands times thousands, literally millions are just there ministering to him, singing songs of worship, if you would, but also 10,000 times 10,000, there's even more who are standing before him. This speaks of what I shared a couple of weeks ago about the Lord of hosts. The book of Isaiah talks about the Lord of hosts. He, he is one who truly uh, speaks about our God who is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. And one of the things you'll find out about prophetic books is they all want to declare the same thing Look up is what I have over the scriptures. Because I mean, we've been reminding ourselves over and over again, we got to remember our God sits on the throne. Give the Lord a praise if you believe that's true. Amen. And you need to understand that he's not shaken. He's not all upset. He's not on his throne like this. Oh, what am I going to do now? The Bible says he who sits in the throne, in the heavens. He will hold them in derision, speaking about those who are rebelling against him. He, he literally laughs at them because it's like, what do they think they're doing? If they could just see this 10,000 times 10,000 is standing in front of me, they would know. But church, more important for us in the body of Christ, how many know we need to know about the Lord who is the Lord of hosts, amen? And always remember that when the judgment is set by whom? The ancient of days, the Lord himself, the books are opened. In other words, whether it's world history, whether it's your history, what's going on in your life, you must know beyond a shadow of a doubt, God sits on the throne. And sometimes, just like the scriptures I read a couple before this one, sometimes you go through a process that seems like it's wearing you out, but always remember the times are in God's hands. The Bible says that the beast, that dreadful beast, tries to change the times and the seasons, but God says, no, I'm the God of the times and the seasons, says the Lord, and you need to know that, amen? So we have to have this confidence at all times. We have to be a people that are continually looking up and recognizing the power of our God. Daniel chapter 7 also says that Daniel spoke saying, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea and four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. Now, a lot of times people like to go on vacation. I do. I love to be on vacation and sit and look at the ocean. How many know there's something about the oceans, relaxing, love to hear the waves, like to look at it? If you're out on the ocean, which is like you would do on a cruise, which I've never went on and never intend to, um, <laughs> and you're out there way in the deep, you have to understand that in the times that this was written, certainly, the, the, the oceans were a fearful thing because the problem with oceans is you don't really know what's under those waters. Come on. Shark, shark. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So when the prophets would speak about the oceans and the seas, they were 
conjure up the thinking in people's mind, well, we don't know what's in the seas. What lurks behold beyond, beyond, underneath those waters? And, and so he's seeing this picture of these great, awesome seas. And where does the beast come from? The beast comes from the seas and also does in the same picture that John had in the Revelation. But I want you to understand that the four winds of heaven are what stir up the sea. And what was it that would awaken the people of God? What did Ezekiel receive from the Lord that he should prophesy? He was to prophesy to the four winds. Oh, winds began to blow upon the church and began to cause this stirring in them and bring the bones to life bit them together and began to put flesh and skin upon them. The important thing is to understand, and I put the scripture from Revelation chapter 7, it's the four angels standing on the four corners of the earth who hold the four winds of the earth. Why is that important to understand? Because you have to know, the Bible even says this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, before the coming of the great day of the Lord, there's first the unveiling of the wicked one. You have to understand that when wickedness comes to the surface, whenever it rears its ugly head, as a Christian, you can get a little bit shaken when you first see the monster coming out of the sea. But you got to remember that ultimately the sea is simply responding to the four winds of what? heaven and that it's the four winds that's stirring this up because God stirs it up so that when the enemy raises his head, God can do something about it. Amen. So we, the people of God, have to understand that sometimes when it seems like things are at their worst, sometimes when a problem arises and you say, oh, I can never handle this, there's no way I'm going to go through this, the Lord would say unto you, thus saith the Lord, you need to understand it was the four winds of heaven that stirred up that sea, says the mighty God. It was the four winds that caused that monster to raise up his head. And you need to know something, I'm sitting on the throne, my angels have have control of the winds, you just have to begin to believe me, says the Lord, that there's a victory coming. I said there's a victory coming, the likes of which you've never known before. We got to trust in the Lord and understand who holds the winds. That's why we need to always understand if you're going to see what's coming out of the ocean, you need to know why it's coming up because church, our God sits on the throne and he always has a plan. Now, remember what it said in Isaiah? It said, put on your beautiful garments. Now, this is what I see here in Ephesians chapter six. This is therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, where which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take what? The helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The beautiful garments that we need to be putting on in these days are these beautiful garments. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. It's Time to get dressed and up in those stand-up clothes, says the mighty God. Now, one of the things I notice about this armor, if you would, truth, righteousness, the gospel of peace, and the shield of faith, it's not so much what you're doing to your situation, it's about what you're letting God do for you. He's trying to work truth in our inward parts. He's looking for a people of righteousness. How many know the Bible says that when our obedience has been made complete, he will avenge all disobedience? He's saying, and we said this again when I was preaching from Isaiah 52, it says, arise and sit. How do you do both? Well, when you stand up with the gospel of peace, you're sitting in a stand-up position, amen? Because you understand that the battle's not yours, it's his.
You're there with your armor on, but you know that your God, come on, give him a praise on that chart. Your God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ask or think. So you say, ah, yes, God sits on the throne. The winds are controlled by his angels. There's 10,000 times 10,000. I can't even do the math without a calculator standing before him. And so what do I have to do when I see the dragon? I got to have peace. And I got to say, Lord, I need faith because the shield that's going to stop the fiery darts of the wicked one is not me trying to go, ooh, 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 ooh. It's not me trying to figure out darkness and looking into the deep darkness and saying, oh, now I understand the conspiracy. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. No, it means you start walking out of the darkness. Come on. And you say, I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding, but in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge him because guess what? He said he will direct my paths. How many out there believe that today, church? And putting on the helmet of salvation is letting God Work that perfect word in us. Now, there is one offensive part of this, which is the sword God gives. But what is it? It is the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. It's not just the letter of the Word, because you can take the Bible and you can take it and make it your little gospel machine gun to blow people away. (laughs) But when you're in the Spirit and the Lord speaks to you, Come on, you can hear a word. The Bible says you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk you in it. And you're going to go like, wow. These are beautiful garments that scare the enemy away. And I believe with all my heart that as we have on these Wednesdays been preparing ourselves at these altars and saying, God, here we are. Take our heart, take our mind, take our spirit. That God has been doing a work inside of us. And I believe it's time to take up the sword, which is the word of God, and have a confidence like we've never had before. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. How many know at Mount Zion we believe in praying in the Spirit? The Bible says praying in the Spirit, building up yourself in the most holy faith. Church, a lot of churches today are downplaying the concept of speaking in tongues and the moving of the Holy Spirit. They're saying, well, we don't need that. It's not real comfortable for people. And, you know, a lot of people don't like that. They get offended and they're not sure what to do. Better kind of keep that on the sidelines. But the Bible's wanting us to know. The Word of God is wanting us to know. The Spirit of the Lord wants us to know in this time. Amen, church? We got to be a people who know how to pray in the Spirit. With all supplication, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication, which means with that steadfastness. The Apostle Paul also said, pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. And I I believe that God in this day as we pray is going to give us a word in our personal lives. He's going to give a word to his ministry as never before. Because church, the politicians are all going to have their ideas to get elected, but the only thing that's really going to make a difference in America is if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. God says, I'm going to hear from heaven, and I'm going to heal your land. Amen? We need to know who we are. We're ambassadors, just like the apostle Paul said, I'm an ambassador in bonds. Pray for me. Because I want to speak boldly because I want you to know no matter what my situation, I know it's the power of the word. With the heart man believes, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. Oh, church, our conversation, our speaking of his word is so important in this time, and it is isn't. Indeed, time to be bold. And Daniel, in closing, saw this. He said, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with clouds of heaven. 
He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all nations, languages, and peoples will serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not be passed away, and his kingdom one which shall not be destroyed. And of course, I also read the scripture that says, and to the saints of the Most High will this authority be given. Amen. God has anointed Pastor Lauren to reach the church with a fresh message for this day. If you would like further information, we also invite you to visit us on the web at mountzion.org where you can hear more of Pastor Lauren's messages and find out about our ministries. If you're visiting the Metro Detroit area, we invite you to worship with us at Mount Zion Church. Thanks again for watching.